Hi everyone, it's Polar Lights and Signals here. Today we're going to get a little bit fishy here with our review, and that's because I am really excited to show you guys this wonderful fixture right here. So let's go ahead and get started. So this is my 1960s Pemco Brightway Jr. in 400 watts mercury vapor. This fixture is also known as the Pemco Fish Head. Um, I don't 100% know why it's uh, called that. Um, it does kind of look like a fish, I guess, but to me it really looks like a submarine, um, especially this version right here. Now this version um, that I'm reviewing is probably the only version um, to exist. Um, there is a fin on this one, as you can see. Now with everyone familiar with this fixture, you'll know that the Pemco Brightway Jr. Um, is advertised with no fin and um, that it is also advertised to use 100, 175, and 250 watt mercury lamps. But guess what? This one is a little bit more special. Um, this one was actually designed to run a 400 watt mercury lamp and since it has a CWA ballast and there's not a lot of room for a capacitor, um, the capacitor is up there where the fin was added. So this is a special 400 watt mercury CWA version. Now, there are choke coil versions that exist for 240. Um, they don't have the fins, but um, those ones are not as exciting, and they did make them in 400 watts, but you'll only ever find this variant with the type of ballasting that I just described in it, which is that CWA ballasting. Now, unfortunately, um, the ballast for this fixture when I got it had a lot of problems. Um, so it's not in this fixture as of currently, and I got this fixture I want to say about a year and a half ago now and I've been working really hard and it's been slow to uh, try and restore the ballast because the actual transformer um, got messed up. Um, the capacitor did fry which damaged the transformer and one of the coils burned up. Um, when I first got this fixture I plugged it in and it uh, ran for a second and then something sparked and it stopped. So um, this fixture unfortunately um, the ballast is under restoration right now and the reason why I'm taking the time to restore the ballast is because it's super rare. It's a really old Sylvania ballast, um, and it's just a weird shaped ballast. It's it's none, like no other ballast I've ever seen, and I don't think you can find them anywhere else. So I'm working right now to restore it. Um, it's currently taken apart, but I got to get new wire for the one core that needs to be done since it got burned up. And uh, yeah, I'm just waiting on the wire and then the varnish, and then I'll put the transformer back together and hopefully have it in here. But uh, in the meantime, I have a new old stock ballast in here that is much older. Um, it's from the 70s, and I am still utilizing the capacitor fin for it. So um, it's brand new, and it'll work, I think, for this video. Anyway, the Pemco Brightway Jr. was not around very long. Um, it was made sometime in the early 60s, and uh, it guess it was not very popular. Um, one, because of this really unappealing shape. <laughs> Um, I think it's cool. Um, it has the name, uh, it has been nicknamed the fish head, I guess because it looks like a fish, and I will say it looks a lot more like a fish head with that uh, capacitor fin, so yeah. Uh, anyway, um, it's uh, hard to find because uh, Pemco made most of their fixtures in Philadelphia, and since Pemco did not do really well in the 60s, um, they didn't really distribute very many of these um, throughout the rest of the country. So they are a very hard fixture to find. Um, I was lucky to find this one. Um, I came across this one. It was at an estate sale on the side of the road. A person obviously had passed away and the people were selling their stuff and he happened to have some Pemco fixtures lying around. Um, I did videos on some of the other ones, but I waited to do a video on this one until I thought this one would be ready enough for a video, obviously. I went ahead and saved it in the glass where it was completely destroyed, but I went back to Philadelphia during their 20... Uh, 21 LED upgrade and I managed to save some fish heads that were there on their system and I did some part change outs and uh, kept all the other fish heads for now and I got this one um, pieced together for the most part and uh, I'm glad I came across this one because this is probably super rare um, someone did spot another one of these in Philadelphia I have yet to go back and try to get it maybe yeah as for now I have this one and maybe that one has an original ballast in it that is not destroyed Anyway, I know I've been talking for quite a bit now. Let's go ahead and look at the outsides. So if I lift my camera up here, you can see it has a very nice, sleek design. 
In a little bit of a way, it does look like the M250, just with a different bottom door, I will say. Um, of course, um, there's a fixture they made just after this um, got discontinued that looks uh, pretty much just like the M250. And it uses, it uses the same top housing, but has a different door on the bottom, a standard door. So yeah, really nice lot, streamlined design. It's very aerodynamic, and it actually to me looks more like a submarine. You can see the glass, how it extrudes. It just kind of goes into the fixture. They like cut the door out for the glass. It's very weird. It has a more submarine-like design to me. You can see the latch on the front to open up the door. It's like a button, and it has a little uh, thing for your thumb to hang on to it for good grip, so pretty cool. And uh, there's no paint on this fixture. Um, I believe these used a hammered uh, silver paint, and like Westinghouse's fixtures, uh, that paint did not last very long and pretty much is uh, completely gone on this fixture. And uh, the reason why I think I know that is because under the fin is still some of the remaining paint um, that has not faded, obviously, because it's not in the sun. So, yeah. But you, as you can see, um, other than that very aerodynamic look, there really is no details. It's uh, completely flat. Um, I will say, I think Pemco was a little cheap at this time um, with that paint um, in mind that they were using. Um, this one doesn't have it. I've seen some of the others do. Um, sometimes there's little imperfections in the metal. Um, this one's just scratched from traveling all around with me. Um, but uh, yeah, this one seems to be pretty good. Um, the fin, yeah, you can kind of see there's some little marks here and there. It's, a little rough, I'd say, in finish. Um, it's okay though, it's still really smooth and nice. It's not like it'll hurt you or anything. Um, on the back here, you can see the hinge. Um, there's like a thing in here, like a rod that pretty much holds it, which we'll look at here more closely. And you can see, like General Electric with their M400 and M250, they got the same exact button setup. It's pretty much a copy to that. If we go down here a little bit, you can see the Pemco logo on the door. There we go. It is embossed really nicely. And uh, yeah, you can see where it extrudes into the glass. And the glass is very cool. And it is unique to this fixture. So the glass is pretty rare. Other than the fin on the top, obviously, you got your photo cell socket, which I'm very lucky mine has. Um, right here, you can see a really old uh, Fisher Pierce photo cell. It's a little hard to see on it. Oh, it's upside down. Yeah, you can't really see it too well, but you can see it very vaguely. It says Fisher Pierce. Um, this is a new old stock. Um, I actually got this off a of marketplace. Um, it has never been used, <laughs> so really cool. And it's a beautiful blue. Um, I really love these photo cells, and I believe uh, looks like it might have gotten rubbed off. I think it's from like '65, so it's a 1965 uh, blue. Um, I'd say this is probably one of the higher quality uh, photo cells um, that was made by them. So really, really nice. A much more long lasting photo cell. It is a very beautiful photo cell. Um, you might start seeing it more in more videos here, but uh, yeah, really cool. If we look at the photo cell socket up here, this is really nice. Um, Pemco uh, did eventually switch to some Bakelite ones that were solid Bakelite. So, I'm a little bit of a quality decrease, but they were pretty good. But this one is really cool. So you got this really nice uh, nylon section. This is nylon plastic. It's molded extremely well. It's very solid, very hard. I like it. It'll never break down. And then it's clipped on to this nice metal ring that uh, pretty much just uh, sits on top of the part that extrudes outward. So really good. And um, to adjust your photo cell socket, you just unloosen these two screws and there's kind of like a half uh, shaped uh, spin plate. And then uh, once you got that loose, you can twist the photo cell and put your north position here, wherever you need to, to face north. And then when you're good to go, you just screw it back down. So yeah, really nice. And I'll flip onto this side. Um, you can see engraved in it, it says PEMCO. You can see it says turn lock. You got your voltage ratings. And then you can see on the other side, on the actual plastic part, that it says PNS. That it stands for uh, Pass and See More. And I actually said it as well on the metal part. Is, so pretty cool. Uh, Pass and See More uh, makes a lot of products still to this day. So pretty nice. Um, this is high quality. Um, I think Lime Materials use these as well. 
on some of their old fixtures. And then you got your north position with a nice solid looking arrow and a nice end below it. So yeah, um, that's really a really nice, really high quality photo cell socket. And uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, with all that said, uh, let me go ahead and show you guys how to open up the fixture. All right, so like I showed you guys earlier, you got this nice little button right here. You just gotta kind of pull up on that like so. All right, and then when you get to the back section here, um, you got, like I said, this little uh, button here, like GE's fixtures have. You just, uh, there's a little piece of metal here that basically helps to keep it on this uh, hinge section right here. So you just want to press it in basically, and then, voila, your door is off. All right, so I went ahead and sat the door on the table here. Um, you can see it's uh, a little bit filthy inside, but um, as time goes on, I'll restore this fixture. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to get the glass off. So it's pretty simple. All you got to do is undo this screw right here. You just take your hefty screwdriver and uh, undo it. Oh, already slid. And uh, you can see there's a tab here. Um, and that basically, uh, when you screw it down, that kind of helps to keep the glass in. But once it's uh, loose, you just kind of slide. Okay. Just kind of lift up a slight bit, slide your glass back. Carefully. Now it's a little awkward because you got this nice flat section on the back that uh, keeps it in. So yeah. All right. So you got the glass out. I'll go ahead and put that aside for a minute, and I'll show you guys that in a sec. So uh, let's look at the door here. So here is the bottom section of the door. It's a uh, pretty blank in here, and but it is uh, very deep. So there's lots of space in there. Um, it's uh, pretty cool. Here's the outside, and I'll show you the bottom section first. So here's the two claws on the back, and then the little thing to keep it on the rod of the top housing. You can see they're made of some really nice stainless steel metal. And like I said, when you press that button, you can see it kind of moves. And then you got the two claws, and they're just screwed in with some basic uh, flathead screws. So yeah, pretty cool. And then I'll show you guys the Pemco logo. Now, even though the door had some unfinishing marks on some of the ones I got, um, all the logos were embossed really well on it. You can see clearly that it says Pemco, and it's a really nice, clean, clear, and crisp in mold. And you can see two holes right here. Those, of course, are drip holes in case any water gets in here, which uh, um, I think this one did experience water. That's probably why the ballast fried. <laughs> um, here you can see uh, where some stickers would have been. Unfortunately, the, these stickers have completely corroded away. Um, it's too bad because they would have showed the ballast and uh, how it was wired. So uh, that's a shame I don't have that information. But uh, I'll try to see if I can retrieve it somehow. Right here you can see that nice little tab that you screw down to hold the glass in. It's also made of a nice stainless steel piece of metal and you got a screw, nice big old screw there. One thing that's funny, without the glass, you can see the huge just dip in the door. <laughs> just got this huge void right here. It's so stupid looking, but uh, yeah. It's a, uh, let me see. Yeah, it's really weird <laughs> when you look at it like that. So very interesting. And of course, towards the front, you can look at the button latch. Oh, my phone's going crazy. You can see that really nice little button latch here. It's also stainless steel, and you got a nice little finger tab riveted to it. It's uh, kind of like uh, GE in a way. Um, some of the early versions, I believe, did not have this thumb, so they added this to obviously make it easier to open. And if we look at the inside, you can see the construction as to how it functions. Every piece here is stainless steel. It's really nice. And you got two rods that go through that help keep the parts on. And then you got a little tension spring on the back there that helps to press it out so it'll always stay closed. I really, really like that. It's a really simple and easy um, construction, and it's a, uh, I will say, even though Pemco was a little bit cheap during this time, I still think they at least executed this design really well. And it's a uh, pretty cool. I really like that button look. It just looks like a button. So it's awesome. But uh, like a, just like a regular circle button thing. And uh, oh yeah, you can kind of see on the front how it's kind of rough on the edges here for the bolt, the opening for the button. So yeah, a little bit of that cheapness there, but that's okay. 
and then uh, and then again, real quick, you can see this nice piece of stainless steel metal here, and there's two big screws that hold it as well. And that is just another tab to help keep the glass in. So yeah, really nice. I'm gonna go ahead and set that off to the side. And now we can look at the wonderful, unique glassware. So here is the glassware for it. It's a really, really unique piece of glass. It's a really well mold molded piece of glass. You can see my hand through it. So you can definitely see it's a nice, clean, clear, crisp mold. It's a, again, you can see the back section is just flat. So yeah, really cool. And there is some wording on it. You can see on the front here, it says P type two. So this is a two way refractor and I'm gonna guess they probably made some four way versions as well. But uh, I don't think you could make a four-way version since this back section is actually cut off. Um, I'm not sure, but uh, yeah. And uh, on the rim here, if we can show that, you can see it says Pemco. And you got the model number of the glass, and I believe it says something else on the other side. Yep. Here is the brand. Uh, Pyrex made this brand of glass. So it's uh, made in USA 4. Now, it doesn't say who it's for. So I'm gonna guess uh, they might have made these for other fixtures as well during the 60s. Um, if anyone knows, I guess, if this glass was made for anything else, please uh, let me know. But yeah, it's a really unique piece of glass. And one thing I really like about it too is it's really thick. It's a nice, thick, heavy refractor. So um, it definitely can handle a lot of heat and probably a little bit of abuse as well. So yeah. Anyway, let's go ahead now and look at the inside of the fixture. So first things first on the back, you can see this nice little stainless steel rod for the hinge and that's where the door obviously claws, the claws hook onto. Yeah, just a nice rod and it's pressed in on either side through the two holes. Really, really awesome and it is stiff, so it's really nice and thick. So I like that and then of course coming inside you can see the two slit fitter clamps. They are nice pieces of galvanized metal and you got these stainless steel screws here. And uh, one way you can tell this is Pemco, and I don't know why Pemco did this with their fixtures, but all the holes are offset for some reason. I have no idea why they did that, but that is uh, apparently a thing with Pemco, so very strange. But uh, yeah, here is the ballast assembly here that I installed. Um, it is retrofitted. Um, I will say uh, Pemco uh, did install ballast with retrofit style brackets, not entirely like these ones, but uh, similar. And uh, yeah, they. Uh, so this is pretty accurate, I'd say, to the original uh, style of the fixture. And up here you can see uh, probably very vaguely, if I can kind of scoot that out of the way. Let me move that light. Uh, it's a little hard to tell, but you can see it's a Jefferson ballast. It's a four tap ballast I installed. I believe this ballast is probably from the 70s. And uh, yeah, I got this temporarily in here. It's a nice small factor uh, 400 watt mercury ballast. So yeah, really nice. Um, I'll uh, put a picture up here um, and kind of to kind of show you guys what the ballast originally looked like in this fixture. Um, you can see it's a uh, pretty rough um, and I, uh, I have it currently taken apart as of right now. It's just on my desk upstairs. So uh, yeah, but it's that ballast that was in this fixture was super cool. And uh, I really hope I can get it back in here someday. That one is a really old uh, CWA 122-40 volt uh, CWA ballast. And um, the capacitor that came with that was an Aerovox capacitor. And I know I've said this a hundred times, but I hate those fucking capacitors. And the capacitor did fry and unfortunately ruined uh, that ballast. So uh, yeah, but it is cool and I hope I can fix it and uh, install it back in here soon. Moving on, we can see the terminal block here and you can see the Pemco logoing on it, which is really cool. And you can see it says strip grade, pretty much tells you how much wires to strip off. And yeah, I got all the, here's all the wiring here for the fixture. And uh, let's move up here to the reflector real quick and I'll take this light bulb out. <clears throat> this is a cool lamp, you guys, you guys are gonna like this one. So here is the 400 watt mercury lamp I got for this fixture. We'll kind of come down to the floor real quick. And then I'll show you the logoing. 
It is a safety vapor 400 watt duro test lamp. And uh, if you can see in there, there's a, uh, there it is. There's a little filament that lights up when it first cut. Uh, kicks on. Um, basically this bulb is, uh, and I didn't even know this at first until I asked some people, um, this is apparently a really rare lamp. Uh, when uh, this, the outer coating of this bulb breaks, like the outer glass shell, um, that filament will burn out so that um, the arc tube won't continue to run and uh, continue to put out UV, which obviously could be damaging to anyone if it's around it or any animals. So uh, yeah, this uh, basically uh, is a lamp that'll make itself intentionally fail if any damage occurs to it. So yeah. And it is really cool when it kicks on because you got that little orange glow with it. So it's a really neat little bulb. I really like it and uh, it hasn't been used very much, obviously. It's had probably about 10% use on it so far. Um, this I got off the marketplace as well, so yeah, it's uh, really nice. I'll go ahead and set that carefully on the floor, and then I'm gonna go ahead and take that reflector out. So basically to get the reflector out, you can see there's this little tab kind of hiding up in here. And it's just gotta, it's a little bit difficult. It's very high quality, so it's hard to get out. You gotta yank it back. Oh jeez, of course this is going to be trouble. No matter how I record this, uh, there we go. You just pull it back and then it slides out. There we go. Once it's out, there you go. Just slide the reflector out. And real quick, we can look at the reflector. It's really awesome, um, obviously design-wise. It's pressed really nicely with some really nice uh, stamped aluminum. It's uh, not, the finish is kind of fading on it, but uh, yeah. But uh, as nice as it is, yeah, it's just a stamped or pressed aluminum reflector, so nothing too special. Um, here's that little piece, like I said, on the front that uh, helps to hook onto that clip. And here's the back section where your lamp will come in. And uh, yeah, there's uh, design-wise, there's just those two little tapers there. It's not really anything special, but uh, it's all right. So yeah. And with that off, you can see those parts, here is that nice clip. It's a, I think it's just a piece of aluminum that's bent into place. And uh, you got this uh, part right here. This is where your, uh, the button latch hooks onto the top housing. It's a nice stainless steel piece of metal that has a screw in it. And uh, I forgot to mention, this has a screw in it as well. So I can take those off if I need to. Here's the bottom of the photo cell socket. You can see that little half spin plate, which isn't really the best thing in the world, but it's all right. And you got the nice uh, fiberglass coated wires that come down to everything else. And here is the light socket. Now you can adjust it. Um, you can't adjust it vertically, but you can move it forward or back. But with this 400 watt mercury version to make the bulb fit, um, you kind of have to leave it all the way back. So uh, yeah, it's kind of dumb. But anyways, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, with all that said, let me go ahead and put this back together and we can watch it warm up. Alrighty, let me go ahead now and shut some lights off here and we can watch this thing warm up. That's one light. And now that's two lights. Alright. So this is my 1960s Pemco Brightwave Junior in 400 watts mercury vapor in one, two, Three. What the fuck? No. Oh. One, two, three. Ah, there we go. See, there's a nice start up there, and you might not be able to, yeah, you can't really see it on camera, but you can see the tungsten. I'll just take a photo of it if I can. You can vaguely see that tungsten on the front lit up. Now a little tungsten does come on. So yeah, it kind of has like an orange color. Um, but yeah, it's uh, the phosphor's not super clear, so it's not super pink, but, or super thick. I meant the phosphor's not super thick. Ugh, all right. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead now and watch this thing warm up.
Okay, we are at full brightness. Let me go ahead and get the camera moved up here and we can take a nice little look at it. <clears throat> Ooh, got blurry. You see the glassware. It is actually really pretty in the dark. You can see the lovely glassware and you can see the bulb in there. It's being so nice and clear. You can see that lettering on the glass. If we look at the door, can we find it? You can see the lovely Pimco logo. Really nice. You can see the hinge section on the back here. If we go on top, got our thin for the cap. Got our lovely photo cell. <clears throat> go on the other side there. Yeah, it's overall really nice. Oh, you got a little hole there where light's escaping. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty cool. Uh, probably gotta open it up to see. I'm gonna open it up for you guys real quick. See if we can... Oops. See that little tungsten on the end? Yeah. Well, it's actually not very bright. Yeah, you can see that little red spot. That's that tungsten. It's not very bright as most of the current is going through that bulb, but yeah. Really awesome. <clears throat> Go ahead and close that back up. There we go. It's a little hard to do it on camera. Yeah, it is really beautiful. Can we get... There we go. Very, very lovely. Alright, so that was my Pemco Brightway Junior and 400 watts Mercury Vapor. I really enjoyed uh, doing a video on this fixture. Um, it is very special and I will definitely keep it in my collection forever as it is a very rare piece. Um, I hope you guys liked it. If there's anything you guys know about these fixtures, um, please let me know down in the comments below. Um, and if anyone knows where any of these fixtures are still in the country, please feel free to share pictures and locations, <clears throat> locations so that people can go and either photograph them or save them or, or whatever, you know. Um, there are uh, very few of these now known to be um, ex still in existence, unfortunately. Um, th the three that I knew of in Philadelphia, of course, are now um, in other collectors' hands, but um, these fixtures are really rare, and apparently there are still some left that have been spotted. And for those people, I recommend trying to talk to the owners and getting these down because they are very rare and they're kind of hard to find um, since they are not, they weren't really made very long, but yeah. And if there's anything you guys happen to know about um, these fixtures, uh, please let me know down in the comments below. Um, of course, um, if you guys are from Canada, you'll probably think of this as the EPAC. Well, this is not the EPAC, um, but I think PEMCO and EPAC had something to do with each other and that is something I didn't mention in this video because I of course, I'm not from Canada, so I don't really know about Canadian fixtures. But, uh, yeah, if you guys know anything about PEMCO and EPAC doing stuff together, please feel free to share that information. Anyway, uh, please like and subscribe if you're new. Um, and, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.